in terms of, of overview and what I intend to do over the, give, present to you over the next few minutes, um, this, these are the topics that I intend to run through, and uh, we might have a little bit of time uh, at the end for some questions. We'll see how we get on. In terms of HBFI and its mandate, I suppose um, we're all very familiar here in the room with the housing shortage that currently exists throughout Ireland. Uh, there was some research done as to why this was. One of the main factors that came out was the fact that a lot of builders, small and medium-sized guys in particular, were not getting back into the market. And I suppose when this was investigated further as to why this was, it was found that they were having difficulty raising finance. So with that in mind, the government went about setting up uh, a number, they made a number of different initiatives. Um, I know John Coleman from the LDA spoke to you yesterday. They were one, and we were a second one, whereby we're being set up to act like, as opposed to be a, but to act like, I suppose, a bank and provide funding for, for the small and medium-sized guys. We're also focusing, I suppose, on providing funding outside the main urban areas. Uh, that's not to say we won't fund in the urban areas, we will, but um, what I'm saying is we'll fund outside, say, the likes of Dublin or Cork or Galway, we will fund out in the, into the towns and villages around Ireland as well, as long as certain minimum criteria met. Look, the graph there, I suppose, you don't need to tell people, uh, you know, the housing shortage, that, that presents us very well. 2012, 2013, there were just over 5,000 units built in Ireland. In 2018, that has increased to 18,000 units. Uh, but at the same time, we're all very familiar, I suppose, with not a lot of analysts out there would be of the view that the actual demand is about 35,000. So we're a long way short still uh, from, from meeting the level of demand that currently exists in the market. In terms of HBFI itself, just a little bit about us. Um, it was established under the Home Building Finance Act, which was signed into law in June, or in December, I beg your pardon, of last year. Um, it's a private company operating on a commercial basis, and this is important. I suppose we are, you know, we're required to actually cover our costs, but profit is not our driver. We are not like the main banks out there. We are not being driven by profit. We clearly need to cover, as I say, our costs, make a small return to the state, but that's not the primary uh, driver or motive here. The primary driver here is that we would actually get funding out into the market to allow the development of new housing. It's, um, it's subject to state aid, and I suppose this is an important point um, in the context of the rates and that that we charge. So we have to be in line with the market. Um, so we cannot provide, I suppose, sub-market funding in terms of costs and price. At the same time, we do uh, believe that we're actually uh, value for money, I suppose, in the context when you compare it to a lot of other funds that are out there providing funding for housing. So again, as I said, it's back to the point that profit is not our main driver, but at the same time, we do actually have to be compliant with state aid. It's a commercially owned entity owned by the Minister for Finance. It has its own standalone board, and we are audited on an annualised basis by the Controller and Auditor General. In terms of funding and targets, then, so we have a fund of 750 million provided to us by the ISIF, which is formerly known as the, R the Pension Fund, and um, this is available for funding over the next number of years. So it is quite a large sum of money. In addition to that, if we use all of that, we have the ability to go out to the market and raise a further 750 million. Based on our business plan, we are hoping to fund about 7,500 units, or new unit, when I say a unit, I'm talking about any type of housing, over the next five years. That means recycling the 750 million twice over that period. And I suppose that's an important point in the context of the presentation here today. We can only fund for the build period. So we will fund for the most risky part of a project, i.e. the build out, but after the product is built, and it's taken over and, and people move into it, then somebody else must come in and fund. So if we're not in it, we, we, we don't have the ability to fund a project for 25 years. We will fund though the most uh, risky part, which is actually the build-out phase. So that's, that's our remission, that's what we've been set up to do. So all in all, we would be hoping to get about 1.5 billion uh, into the market for housing over the next five years. As I say, we're very much demand-driven, so we have, for once, in terms of capital, it is not in short supply here. We have 750 million, the ability to get another 750. So as long as we get projects to meet the minimum criteria, we are prepared to fund them and we will actually react to whatever level of demand is out there in the market. In terms of what would we fund, so we will fund the purchase of a site and we will fund the development uh, of the project itself. So we can fund up to 80% of a project if you already have the site. In a scenario where you want to, you need to purchase the site, we will fund up to 60% of the cost of the site, and we can also fund then up to 100% of the development, subject to an overall cap of 80%.
So again, there must be 20% equity, and that can be in any shape or form. That can be in equity in the site, or that can be in the shape of cash if people have the ability to, to raise funds. So we, I suppose, and that's what differentiates us from the other pillar banks. We can lend up to 80% of the loan to cost of a project. There are very few, if any, uh, the pillar banks out there currently providing that level of gearing in Ireland. Um, there are alternative funders out there who will provide that, but they're charging double digit rates for the money. So we will provide funding of up to 80%, and I think that makes us fairly unique at reasonable rates uh, in the Irish market. We will require a first ranking charge over the land during the build out phase. So while we have the money out, we will require a charge over the site uh, and any work in progress. But again, clearly, once that's paid back at the end of the build out, uh, we release that charge back. We do appoint monitoring surveyors uh, during the build-out phase of a project. Uh, that's ensuring basically that the money is being spent as it's intended. And also, if it's, a, if it's a site where we're talking about houses as opposed to apartments or duplexes or whatever, we may require uh, some phasing depending on the size and scale of the project. But that's on a case-by-case -case basis. In terms then of the, what's, our minimum, what's our criteria for lending money for development, so it's a minimum of 10 units. Uh, so we require that a site has, has a minimum of 10, and the simple reason for that is, is that there are certain costs associated with putting a facility in place. We want to ensure uh, that the money is being used, I suppose, for the larger scale projects, in other words, from 10 up. Uh, we insist that planning permission must be in place, so we will fund a project once there's planning permission there, and, or indeed if planning permission has been sought and it's in the process of being uh, achieved, then we will happily talk to people at that point in time. But we will only sign a facility once planning permission is in place. And again, the rationale behind that is, is that so that the money that we have available is used quickly, get, is, is out in the market, builds the units, and is back in again. We don't want to commit money to projects that may not take place for four or five years because of some planning difficulty. That just ties it up, and that means we can't get the volume that we need. We look at a project in terms of its commerciality, and again, what I mean by that is that it actually is break even, that it covers its cost. So clearly, if a, product, if a project, when the numbers are analysed at the end of the day, doesn't actually break even or doesn't cover its costs, uh, then that's not something we can fund. And what I mean when I say cover its costs, in other words, there is a plan there and that the figures match up over the period of time. Uh, so if there's a buyout at the end or a refinance at the end or something like that, uh, at the level of which we have lent, then clearly we can, we can fund that. But we do analyse the project in advance to make sure that it adds up and, in other words, the project doesn't run out of money halfway through. Clearly that's not uh, in anybody's interest. In terms of our lending, we will, we will only lend to corporate entities or SPV, so really what we won't do is lend to an individual, and again that shouldn't be an issue I suppose in this context here, so we will actually have to lend to some kind of a, an SPV because again it's just in everybody's interest that it's not down to one individual or down to a person. Uh, the maximum amount we can lend is 35 million. As I mentioned earlier, the maximum term which we can lend for is five years and we require a minimum of 20% equity. Again, in terms of geographic spread, as I said, we're very happy uh, to look at projects anywhere throughout the country. So in terms of our rates, and after our last speakers, we probably look a bit expensive, but I think that's Ireland as a whole. I don't think it's necessarily uh, down to HBFI. But as I said, we lend up to 80% of loan to cost. Our indicative margin at the moment for the construction phase of a project is between 5 and 8% over the three-month year RIBOR. Um, as again, as I said, relative to the last presenters, that probably looks expensive. But I think if you look at what the other pillar banks in, in Ireland are currently lending at and pro it up to the level of gearing that we will provide up to 80%, it will look quite comparable or favourable there. In addition to that, um, there are no funds out there in the private sector that will lend at those kind of rates. So um, it's not cheap, but I suppose the reason it's that between five and eight is we borrow our money and we have to pay a rate on that ourselves. So the minimum rate we can actually lend on uh, in order to break even is 5%. I suppose the other aspect in terms of actually how do we adjudicate and how do we arrive at a rate for a particular project, and we do that by looking at the level of risk in the project itself. So if the project is you know, if there's demand for it, if the, if the developer or if the entity behind it is experienced in developing in that, well, that certainly reduces the risk from our perspective, and that means that we can actually uh, provide the money at a cheaper rate. In terms then, just briefly, I suppose, of our operating model, um, I suppose we like to think that we're fairly flexible and we're quick in terms of our decision making. We have a total headcount of just 23 people, so it's a small entity. We're not a big cumbersome bank with layers and layers of management and layers and layers of bureaucracy, so we're very tight, we're very small, so we can make quick decisions. 
We do have an experienced residential lending team. While we're a new entity, we have a very experienced team of people there. So again, if somebody comes to us with a proposal, we can look at it very quickly and analyse it and determine whether it's something we can do. We actually have a very informative website, or we like to think it's informative, there it's at www.hbfi.ie. So anybody interested in a project now, it is, to be honest, geared more at developers and builders and that, but certainly if people want to make contact with us and talk about a specific project they have, which might be slightly out of line with the normal type of project, we're more than happy to do that. Uh, there are contact details there, so uh, feel free to contact us. We do actually, um, in our, uh, we do actually put out the fact that we have simplified documentation because um, a lot of the feedback that we got from, from you know, industry and that in the past was a lot of these banks and funds are going into very complex legal documentation. We have simplified that considerably. It's still quite an amount at home of paper, but we have simplified it with a view to people being able to actually understand what it is that they're, they're, they're buying into effectively. We will provide assistance in terms of you know, working through the process and working through the application process. Again, as I said, we're not motivated by profit here. We're motivated by getting as much cash as we can out with a view to actually delivering housing. And we actually pride ourselves, again, in that we actually make quick decisions and give an early indication as to whether a project is, is something that we would can fund, fund or not, as the pace may be. So in terms of our application process, so normally uh, there's an expression of interest form on our website, which people complete, some basic questions there, and submit that, and then a member of our lending team will come back generally within 24 hours and have a discussion with the, with the uh, person leading the project and actually determine whether an application should, should be submitted or not. Equally, as I said, if somebody wants to have a chat with us uh, without submitting an application or expression of interest, there are contact details on the website, and we're more than happy to discuss a project with somebody in advance of, of an application being submitted. I suppose just in terms of um, what we've seen to date, I suppose we have well over 100 applications or well over 100 expressions of interest. By the way, I should have said we've been up and running since the end of January, so we're, not, we're, we're very new to the market, I suppose. Uh, but in that short period of time, we've had a huge level of interest and we've been uh, very happy with the level of interest that we've had. So we've had well over 100 applications which we're processing. Uh, at the moment, we have a number of facilities approved and actually we have money out in the market. So they're the, they're the projects we have already approved. So as you say, um, none of them are actually Dublin, but we do have quite a number of Dublin-based proje projects coming through over the next few weeks. So it's not that we won't lend in Dublin, we certainly will, but I suppose it proves the point that uh, we're also focused outside the main urban areas. It's not just, just Dublin. In terms of, uh, in summary then, I suppose HBFI will, or we certainly hope, will make a material contribution to uh, new housing in Ireland. Um, we're a funder, I suppose, and it's an important point. We're not the builder, we're not a developer, we're just merely the funder. So while we don't necessarily want to be called a bank, I suppose we operate similar to, to a bank. Um, the level of lending, as I say, is very much demand driven. So we have 750 million there, and so capital or lack of it is not, is not, a, 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 it's not in short supply, which I suppose is, is somewhat unusual. Um, we will fund, we'll only fund commercially viable projects, and what I mean, as I said by that previously, they need to, to, to break even and we are subject to the state aid rules, so that's an important point, I suppose, just in the context of our lending rates. So with that, um, if anybody has any questions, I don't know if you want to take those now or we can do them no. later. <laughs> uh, Michael, thank you for being here. We are going to take some questions, but we have a process, so if you'd like to sit okay. down, if, the, if Carlos and Daniela could uh, join the panel. Uh, thank you, Michael.